someone actually did fraud with my driver's license and collected unemployment in 2020 so i'm trying to work that out but until that's worked out i can't file for short-term disability and i'm just kind of have to see where the cards fall Today is a lovely day. Ignore all the stuff in the background. I'm like organizing my closet and preparing for so many different things. But today I really wanted to vlog because I've talked a little bit about uh, me getting double jaw surgery on my channel so I'm having surgery in March and one thing I don't feel like a lot of people talk about is when they have to leave work for extended periods of time it's kind of like we don't know really what to do are we gonna get paid like what are the HR aspects behind it and then how do people perceive that in your workplace so everyone's always asking like what the environment is like in the pharmaceutical industry and me taking an extended leave of absence which is gonna be one month for one month I'm not gonna be working at all not not doing anything the only thing I will be doing is vlogging on my personal channel all the videos on the career savage channel are going to be pre-recorded videos for at least the entire month of March and for the better part of April until I feel comfortable talking again on camera and my face swelling goes completely down so I'm preparing so I don't leave you guys empty-handed so you're still getting content we're still gonna finish out the regulatory affairs explained series we're still gonna figure finish out the interview series yeah in this vlog I kind of want to just take you guys through my day talk about some of the things that I'm working on at work and then also talk about the process of requesting literally a month off of work and still getting paid a certain amount to a point this is also why I really wanted to have a full-time job before my surgery because the benefits you get as a contractor are barely anything compared to the benefits you qualify for as an FTE so you know the routine it's 8 30 I've been up since 7 though just chilling in my bed answering emails but I'm gonna go to my favorite coffee shop which is in Silver Lake. So, let's go. Also, do you guys like my braids? I feel like my face is so clear. Okay. <laughs> so this coffee shop is very close. Ooh, see, I didn't pin it down today, <laughs> but this coffee shop is really close and they have the best coffee hands down, in my humble opinion. So what am I working on at work right now? Same old, same old. Maintaining my application, working on various submissions. I had been saying before that I'm work I was working on like this really big project. The project is still ongoing and it's probably gonna go on for a lot longer, but right now is kind of like a waiting period for us. From the title, or by the title, you can tell that I'm gonna be talking about uh, taking a leave of absence from work for one month and it's for my surgery it's not like i'm taking one month off for holiday vacation or anything like that i just kind of wanted to talk through the different processes and steps i had to go through so the first thing i did actually was schedule a meeting with hr and my manager to tell them that i was having surgery i've been talking about the surgery for months so it's not news to anybody basically just told my manager that i would need the entire month of march off to prepare heal and actually have the procedure my doctor actually i was telling him i only wanted to take two weeks off and he said no he said that he would prefer if I only had, if I had a month off because my jaw is wired shut for the first two weeks and then I have to like retrain my jaw, maybe not two weeks or I forgot how many days, but my jaw is wired shut for an extended period of time. And then after that, I have to kind of like retrain myself to talk and chew and eat and be normal with this new jaw. So naturally he was saying that like a month off, he honestly was hoping I could even do a month and a half, two months off, but I was like, absolutely not. Like. No, but again, we'll see how it goes and how I heal and stuff like that because if if I have to, you know, be gone for extended periods of time, I have to be gone for extended periods of time. But anyway, basically I just met with HR and HR was telling me that since I'm a newer employee, um, I don't qualify for extended leave. And extended leave, what that means is when you leave, you're still, like you still have job security. So they can't get rid of your job, they can't fire you 
while you're on your leave. However, because I'm a newer employee, I only qualify for short-term disability. I don't qualify for the extended leave, which has that job security coverage. Now, I don't think anything's gonna happen to my job in the month that I'm gone. Honestly, doubt it. But if that happens, that's extremely unfortunate but I'm thinking positive because I don't really feel that that's what's gonna happen. But my HR just had to inform me of that. Short-term disability works is you get a certain percentage of it through your state and then you get another certain percentage through your job. Short-term disability insurance. This is why people always say re review your benefits in great detail because when you first start working and they do like your onboarding, you can either accept or deny the short-term and long-term disability coverage. Always accept it because surgeries are included in that. I even think maternity leaves are also included in that if you don't qualify for other maternity benefits. But honestly, always, always, always say you want that short-term and long-term disability insurance it's like an extra three four dollars out of your paycheck I promise you you won't notice it how it works is the state gives you up to a certain maximum I think they give you up to like fifteen hundred dollars a week and if you make less than that then the state might give you less so if you only make a thousand dollars a week the state is likely only going to give you a thousand dollars a week but if you make more than a thousand dollars a week the state it's gonna give you up to that 1500 or whatever their number is. And then what happens is your job's short-term disability insurance covers the rest up to whatever percentage that was promised. So if your job short-term disability says you get up to 75% of your salary, the state will give you your 1500 or whatever, and then your, the short-term disability will cover you up to that 75% that they promised. Oh my gosh, these roads are so bumpy. That's how short-term disability works. Now, you might be thinking, wow, I'm only getting 75% of my pay. To my knowledge, in the state of California, short-term disability is not, you don't have to pay taxes on it. Federally, you do, but in the state of California, which we have very high <laughs> income tax, we do not have to pay taxes on that money. So it's basically like the same thing after taxes. Your pay is like, it. I've heard that it doesn't, D differentiate like all that much you can ask for whatever amount of time you need what I also have been told by my organization is that I will need to get a physical release form from my doctor in order to come back to work and in the month that I'm gone I'm not allowed to work at all like seriously I'm not allowed to work I can't do anything no emails no meetings no I decided to pop into something for the day no you have to literally be gone for that month which I think is very healthy because it actually gives you time to focus on healing without feeling bad that you're missing things at work. And honestly, this company that I work for is extremely, extremely, extremely supportive. I actually don't know if I've openly said what the name of the company is that I'm working for, and I think I'm gonna keep it that way. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it was just, I just wanted to kind of inform you guys on how the short-term disability thing works, because no one ever explained it to me, and I'm fig figuring it out right now, but it's actually a really simple process. And you apply for short-term disability on your state's website. So I go to California, the DDE or something like that, disability something.gov for the state of California and I apply through there. And they always say you wanna apply ahead of time. So I'm actually gonna be applying in the next coming of days so I can just get it all squared away. And that is pretty much. I'm going to focus on getting back to my house because I've missed my way a few times. So I will vlog more when I get inside my house. I have such a high fever. But okay, so I got tested for COVID. Like, I remember. Yeah, a week and a half ago, and I was negative. So I was just going about my life. And, and I was fine. And then on Monday and Tuesday, I had a really intense workout. At, uh, yes, let me see. Let's see. We'll do it right now. Very, very helpful. Uh, oh Thank you so much. No Sorry problem. For, uh, oh, stop. No, no worries. <laughs> Guys, I realized I forgot to film an end to my vlog from yesterday, but please make sure you go check out my personal channel because I'm going to be doing a story time over there. I know I talked to you guys about like filing for disability and what that means. Come to find out someone actually did fraud with my driver's license and collected unemployment in 2020. So I'm trying to work that out. But until that's worked out, I can't file for short term disability. And I'm just kind of have to see where the cards fall. Go to my personal channel because I'm going to talk about that story time. It's going to be a good video. But 
until my next video guys bye <laughs>